everybody, and welcome to the Pix Car Spective. <laughs> that totally wasn't planned. No, I totally didn't think of that five minutes ago. Yeah. Let's introduce ourselves, because we have a special guest today. Oh, yes, that's yeah. right. Uh, this is episode seven of our Pix Car Spective, and uh. what a lucky episode it is, because I am the Wash. I am a random bystander here. This is a lucky episode, because seven's the lucky number. And we have our special guest today. Please introduce yourself. Uh, I am Roz Dower, also known as Count Rancid and NKVD's Nuts on Twitter. Wash posted an episode of this podcast he did with you fellas in another Discord, a Discord we're both in. And he told me, hey, you know, maybe you'd like to come. We're doing Incredibles this week. And I thought, oh, great. That'll be fun. And then he said, no, turns out we're already doing Incredibles. But you can be on the Cars episode. <laughs> this, this is exactly why I said let's not have this guy on for the Cars episode. <laughs> how do you think, how do you think this makes him feel? <laughs> Yeah, Listen, we've done uh, six, of, told we've done six of the classic the Pixar expert. films, but no, we'll have you on for Cars. That's good. We won't wait a week for Ratatouille. We'll we'll just have you on for Cars. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> I'd say Cars is the perfect time. I I could have been on for say like Brad Bird's lazy objectivism, but <laughs> we could have discussed like classic mid-century superhero tropes. But instead, we're just going to talk about the fucking Cars movie. <laughs> the white elephant of the Pixar. Uh, the Pixar family. <laughs> and what a fucking Cars movie this is. Oh my god, it's the one that started them all. Say anything Say anything about the movie, it's about Cars. That, yeah. Yes, yes, it is it's exactly about cars. what it says on the tin. Yes. Now, now if I were... I, I recall you fellas were... A little cynical about a bug's life. Uh, okay, well, in fairness, two of us weren't. Yeah. <laughs> I used to not be. I, I used I to was... like it, and then I watched it again. <laughs> a bug's life is terrible. It is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> yeah, but the it thing has... is, the, the difference is, I would say, is like, after Toy Story... Pixar could basically anything could fall out of their ass and the critics could say it was gold. Toy Story was a tough act to follow, but A Bug's Life somehow managed to buoy the expectations by not being a complete failure. Yes. Cars is, I would say, the first contemporary disappointment in the Pixar's canon. That, that's true. We can definitely get into that, especially like, the, God, do I have a lot of notes on that? But the, the way we do this uh, when we start out is that uh, each of us actually talk about our history with the film. So uh, I guess we might as well just take it to uh, t tonight's uh, Cars defender, Kirby. The first time I saw Cars, I was in a class. I don't remember what class it was. <laughs> I, just, I just remember watching the movie and being like, wow, this movie is animated. Animated movies are for babies. I better go watch non-animated <laughs> movies, and then I became a decent contribution to society human being, and I liked animated movies, and I saw Cars, and I thought, hey, this movie's pretty good, I like it, and then the more I saw it, the more I was just kind of like, wow, this, this movie's good, I like it, and then sure enough, I go to talk to somebody, literally anybody on the planet about it, and it's just... Wow, you like cars? <laughs> that movie was the first disappointment in the Pixar legacy. Alex, come on. What kind of asshole would say something like that? So going into this movie today, I was really worried. I was so worried I was going to go into it and just be, man, I, I, I get it. But at the same time, I was also worried that I was going to go into it and be, you know, everyone hates this movie, so I'm going to defend it. So I just tried going in with zero expectations, as I always do. And I succeeded. I went in with no expectations. Did I like it or did I dislike it? You'll have to wait and find out. Oh my god. Oh shh. You teasing bitch. <laughs> Heck yeah. Yeah, random and wash have to go still. Let's Okay. Let's yes. do that. Yes. So um, random, go ahead. Uh I probably remember watching this in the classroom as well, but I I think it was either seventh or eighth grade, and I didn't pay attention. 
because it was cars. <laughs> And then I like I remember watching it with you guys and being like just going with everyone hating it and be like my god why does why cars why why and I just I remember it was the bottom of the barrel until another movie came out but and I just remember being in the bottom of the barrel for Pixar movies like every other Pixar movie was good except for cars and <laughs> And I, the, I will say when we watched again, like when we tried to do Pixar Perspective a long time ago, mm-hmm. I liked it better, but I still thought it was maybe the <laughs> second or third worst. I, it's and now I'm, well, you'll have to see because <laughs> I watched it. I've only watched it a handful of times, and yeah, it's it's. We'll get to it. <laughs> oh, thank God for. The good dinosaur episode. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I have no idea. There, there are two Pixar movies that we're gonna bring up in every podcast episode. One is Good Dinosaur because of what Random thinks about it, yeah. and the other is A Bug's Life because that movie's awful. <laughs> like the thing is, it, it, at least with a Good Dinosaur, none of you will have any nostalgia conflicting with your. I have nostalgia opinions. for that movie. I have nostalgia for Random yelling about it. <laughs> I, we, yeah, there's a little bit of nostalgia. The anger is for... brewing with every episode. <laughs> the, my my one nost- uh, okay, quick tangent. My one my one nostalgia uh, for a good dinosaur is that when I watched it with Kirby and Random separately, uh, at, yes. at one particular moment, we couldn't. We tried so hard not to burst out in laughter. It was a joyous uh, movie to watch in the theater. We'll get to that. Hurry we'll before my blood that. pressure rises. Yeah, yeah. Let's. <laughs> my. We got. We got to start talking about cars. Wash your up. <laughs> my experience with cars is. I remember this was one of the first. This was one of the first movies where I saw the trailer for it online. Oh my god! I come. I just remembered. Like the teaser trailer for this. Uh, was it had a little bee flying around and you can hear the Buzz Life theme playing it. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I remember that. And then, and then like the bee's go- going and then suddenly it gets run over by a tow truck. And then Even the cars camera- hated a Bugs Life. <laughs> I love was this it, movie. Was, was, <laughs> the, did it get run co- over or was it like smeared on the windshield? Yes, that's right. It was stuck in his eye. And he's, and he's like, I Ew. put a little bumblebee. And that was how the world found out that Larry the Cable Guy was going to be in a Pixar film. <laughs> I don't care who you are, that's funny. Oh, it's actually pretty good. <laughs> and then, I don't remember, I might have watched it in theaters, but I have no recollection uh, of it. I just remember seeing it in, like, maybe some class, and then I saw it in, I, I think I rented it from the, from the uh, library once, and then I... I ended up buying the Blu-ray for it. Oh, okay, and then I, I feel like my actual impressions of it. When I first watched it, I thought it was okay. And then uh, I would, you know, I grew up knowing about, like, how the, the kids were taking it, and so I just kind of believed that. As we, like, Kirby, uh, Random, and I watch it uh, together, I, I see, like, some small semblance of, okay, there's something in here, but, and I'll get to the but soon enough, <laughs> to, the, to the trunk. If you will, but meanwhile, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. meanwhile, <laughs> let's take it over to Count Rancid Raj Dower. I I saw the uh, teaser for this thing, uh, much as Wash describes it, uh, ages ago. I think it was was it on the Incredibles DVD? It I might have been. Yeah, I think it was. It oh, maybe. But I saw the trailer for it maybe a couple of scattershot times. The only thing I really remember is uh, Sally having, like, a little tramp stamp tattoo <laughs> on the butt. That's the one – That's the one. It, it, there's two things that stuck out to me from that trailer is uh, Sally's tramp stamp tattoo – and the most, like, one of the most mawkish sentimental moments in the movies made her just suddenly saying, my best friend. <laughs> and I thought, ugh. How, I, how much do you think they had to restrain themselves from adding one is the loneliest number to, like, any shot of Lightning McQueen just looking desperate and alone? <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, that... <sighs> 
God, I have so many issues with the with like the music in this. It's not the first Pixar film to have like outside music because the uh, uh, Finding Nemo ends with the um, uh, Somewhere Beyond the Sea by I forget who sang that. Um, it might be Frank Sinatra. Oh, okay. It might just be the original. No, or it could be or, or, no, it wouldn't. That, possi- it possibly, that. possibly that was, that was the original Bobby Darren recording. I I don't know. <laughs> This is why people. I love. Lie. I love how we're talking about everything but cars. Yeah. <laughs> or, the, or trying is... to find everything to do but not talk about. Oh, cars. Okay. Okay. Fine. Then... So who's gonna do the plot summary? How's oh, that? Yeah. That's so right. anyway, let's, 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 it, it, it just let me Wait. let me finish. I had not actually seen cars until two days ago. Oh wow! Okay. Oh my Which... god. That is very interesting. That, and, uh, that's really interesting. When you're 26 years old and <laughs> deeply jaded, that's really the best way to watch Cars, I think. <laughs> that's the best way to go into Cars fresh. <laughs> wow. That, I wish I could experience what you just experienced. Honestly. I am so excited for this episode. Since you're a new Cars expert, uh, Raj Dower wanted you to, wanted to do a b- basic plot synopsis. Okay, so there's this car, see? You with me so far? Yeah. And he's an asshole. (laughs) He cares about nothing other than fame and fortune and glory and general personal betterment. And he uh, has a rival, a very underdeveloped rival, I should add, that uh, wants to see him fail and like sort of an older ancillary character that's like a humble sort of fella that keeps that tries to keep, that tries to give him some advice to stay grounded but he's not listening mm. and anyway through a series of very convoluted events i can't stress i can't stress that adjective enough he <laughs> winds up away from the big race where he's supposed to uh do a qualifying rematch he ends up in a little uh, shitwater town called Radiator Springs, where he meets a colorful cast of locals and maybe, just maybe, finds his true purpose. Well said. Well said. That was beautiful. That was, that was wonderful. Thank you. Made me cry. <laughs> made me cry. Uh, it made me cry. Uh, uh, lighter fluid. No, I screwed that up. Damn it. Lighter fluid? Lighter Do you fluid. mean oil? Damn it. Windshield lighter fluid. God damn it. Look, Wind if it's any consolation, lighter. by the end, I was crying too. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't cry because it's over. Smile because it's over. <laughs> I was crying because it wasn't over soon enough. <laughs> well, that sums up your own things about the movie. Okay. All right. Okay. So, what should we talk about now? I, I guess we, we should uh, start off with the characters. Let's start off with... Let, okay, let's, let's, let's take it from the top. Let's, let's talk about Lightning McQueen. Oh, my God. Ugh. Uh, uh, oh, boy. Uh, he is not my favorite main character, to say the least. <laughs> no. Oh, I will, I will say this. I didn't mind him so much until the part of the movie when he had to go with the, the Rusty Cars. Yeah. Because he was yeah. his sponsor. That was when I just... That's when I hated you're, him. You're, you're, you're dead to me. Everything before that was fine. You know, not necessarily likable, but setting him up so that he could have his fall. I'm okay with that. But oh man, that the was the fact bad. that he was like that to his the people who helped him get his big break. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, he- I I actually have a note here about the Rust Easy scene. Mm-hmm. You see, the uh, it's a bumper ointment endorsement deal. Yes, it's implied to be the car equivalent of hemorrhoid cream. <laughs> so, yes. does this mean that all the rusty cars he meets in that tent are like the car equivalent? Of someone that's covered in shit. Uh, we don't really think this is cars. If they didn't think about the movie, why should we? Yeah, yeah. Except, that, I, I think that's gonna be. Um, I'm gonna give like a tiny bit of uh, background that's gonna come to a point. So the original uh, premise for Cars was um, this was actually not the unnamed director's idea. This was originally the idea of a I think it was a Danish animator 
who wanted to make a film about an electric car, a Danish electric car. It's the equivalent of the Ugly Duckling story, like it's a fairy tale of the yeah. of, a, of an electric car that uh, that everyone thinks like, oh, that electric car is ugly. It only has three wheels. It's worthless. And then it and then the electric car turns out uh, good at the end. And they they said, okay, that's kind of cute, but that doesn't give us much of a of a story. But you know what we did like? We liked that. We liked the town. Let's keep the town thing. We like the, 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 the original uh, premise still had the hippie van and the army uh, sergeant. Those, were, those two were still were in the original and they kept those, but they, they just ran with, the, with their own ideas and the, and the unnamed director just, just like took it on, on himself to throw in all these different ideas and God, it's, going through like the DVDs and Blu-rays and stuff, you really get a sense of, of just like how big they were dreaming with this. It, it, it's hit and miss doesn't really cover it much, but the point I'm getting at is that it, it was originally conceived to be just a fairy tale. It was the ugly duckling. This is my tepid defense of this. I think that's what this really is. It's just a fairy tale. You're not really, you can't think any further than this because like, like just analyzing one word, like, <laughs> like somebody mentioning a map. Okay, how the hell do they deal with maps? How do they handle a map? How do they pull out a map? How how does GPS work? Is the GPS inside their head? Anthony, you, 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 could, you could even say you could say that about the movies that everybody likes, though. You're not going to tell me that Monsters Inc. <laughs> a, 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 un, a universe where wet dog is a detergent, Boo wouldn't immediately come to this world and just <laughs> collapse from the smell. <laughs> with all these movies, that's a thing, but people only focus on it with cars. Well, because... they focus on it with, with cars because they're not they're not engaged with it. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> but if you look at any of the other Pixar movies, for the most part, except yeah, the, that's kind of... <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, yes. It's, it's, it's not like Incredibles has never had the shit analyzed out of it for its story feelings. <laughs> oh, yeah, but, yeah, that's true. By the way, isn't that the most Danish pitch you've ever heard for an animated movie? A little electric car is told it cannot make it, but it becomes a moderate <laughs> success. Honestly, I was so I just found out about this like like a couple hours ago. Like I was just I was just going through like I was just looking up like cars and just going through and I found like they were talking that they were talking about it in of all things the art book for cars too. <laughs> Because a whole bunch of the ideas that they had from that original premise and that they had for Cars 1 that they threw away, they put back into Cars 2 and then later on in Cars 3. So that means that I can actually reuse that art book again and again for the next three episodes of Cars, the Cars Spective. So you're telling me that uh, one story stretched out over three movies isn't (laughs) going to come across as a little thin. (laughs) No. (laughs) Uh, Not at all. (sighs) No way. (laughs) So anyway, rest easy. It's, uh, It's horrible. It's unfortunate. There's this one car, Fred whose yeah. front bumper jaw keeps falling out and he's shedding flakes everywhere so he's basically a leper yeah and yeah. it's His it's disgusting with it. yeah it's disgusting in a way that showing an actual person would not be because you're implying that this version is okay for children <laughs> it's 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 it feels so strangely misanthropic compared to every other part of the movie. It, it's it's definitely. I mean, we were originally talking about uh, Lightning McQueen, but I I do want to point out that it's I noticed a lot more like adult jokes in this film than in, than I I have in uh, like like uh, there there were some adult jokes in, in in Incredibles, especially like the when you when you see the the relation between uh, Bob and Helen, but. Those are like yeah. human adults. That, that that makes like obvious sense. 
But like we said, there's the there's like the weird, there's the tramp stamp. There, there's one uh, news reporter that says, "Is it true he's gonna uh, pose for Cargirl? The implication of of a Cars version of Playgirl is uh, why? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and during that Rusty's part, they 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 um the two uh, announcers, the two like the the, the brothers the, that had the, the car talk the guys. Rusties, they have a rhyme and they um. Uh, it's something, something. No, it's and your butts, and the the ending line. It, whoa, what's no, the and, and freeze your and hey, there's lightning. It's, yeah, <sighs> it's uh the, it's the uh late lamented uh car talk boys of radio fame. <laughs> I I don't know who that was for. There's a lot of industry people, like car industry people, in this movie doing voices like couple of car writers i believe one of them plays the sheriff and the, there's one like the dynaco uh ceo is the former owner of a racetrack <laughs> like really? where did they get these people <laughs> i definitely noticed the the dale earnhardt jr cameo which was really bad like he's just not he just does not uh do a good job with the with acting it He's, he just says in the, uh, uh, like the blandest voice, it's, it's like, wow, unbelievable. That many wins in a single season. He, that- he handles himself a little better than Michael Schumacher, I'm going to say that much. What? Michael Schumacher is atrocious in this movie. Oh, God, which one with Michael Schumacher? I'm trying to remember. He's the, uh, he's the Ferrari that visits Luigi at the end. Oh! Hello, Luigi. It's good to see you. <laughs> I heard this is a good place to find to find some tires. Why don't you get my voice? It sounded it it actually it almost works in the in the contest because it it's it sounds like Lightning just called. Hey, Michael Schumacher, can you just come in and just pretend to buy some cars? And he just like fakes his way through it. <laughs> it's like one of those really badly thought out Simpson cameos where Bart be is sure to yell the name of the celebrity for beforehand and then they just come out of the shadows like that's right Bart <laughs> yeah yeah like whoa Mario and Dreddy <laughs> it's, it's, like that that line was purely for because like how many people know Mario and Dreddy well, I mean, a lot of people compared to Michael Schumacher, probably. Uh, like, like Dale, Mario, and of course, uh, Richard Petty uh, playing the king. These are names that are somewhat well known to the public. Yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. You know who's really uh, well known, though? Owen Wilson, the voice yeah. of Lightning McQueen. <laughs> Good chow! <laughs> Oh god. Ah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. 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 Wow is a very good way to describe Lightning McQueen. <laughs> yeah, I, I he I'm I'm going I'm going to say this up front. Was he miscast? I, I don't know. I don't think know. so. I don't think he was miscast. I just think Lightning is not a good character. I I I, <laughs> I, I don't think he was miscast so much as he just like he blended in too well. Like it's you you oh, would have God. you would have to have somebody like remind you that that is Owen Wilson because otherwise it's just it's fine the performance is fine but it doesn't it doesn't scream out anything memorable like like uh like Billy Crystal does or or, or the the brief cameo from Richard Kind Ri- like, the, the Richard Kind cameo is just delightful I don't <laughs> think he was miscast because he kind of plays the role of an asshole very well oh, yeah. um, but that's also not I'm sure they weren't trying to do all that I, I think they were trying it's just that they, they they like you said this is the kind of movie this is this is a redemption arc that uh, yeah. that he is that he's an asshole and then he's gonna um, he's gonna uh, have a change of heart gonna redeem himself uh, towards the end but mm-hmm. he just doesn't have like we said the like the way he he treated uh, uh, his sponsors at the at the Rusties, like just and, and and like the whole the the whole reason that he got abandoned from the truck is that he he pushed uh Mac the the truck so hard that he that he ended up falling asleep on the wheel literally. 
Um, yeah, Mac, Mac, by the way, our uh, resident John Ratzenberger cameo. There's a... John Ratzenberger. Yeah. If we're going to talk about people getting roles, we got to talk about John Ratzenberger. <laughs> there is a really terrible bit at the end where they try to, like, wink and nudge you as to, hey, isn't it funny that Cliff from Cheers in the, is in all these movies? And yeah, yeah, we get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. They... It's cute. It, it... Is it? Is it? Like, if you're going to do that, I, I feel like you can at least... I feel like the parody themselves should at least be a little something instead of just Pixar but cars, like <laughs> it's toy car story, monster. You are a toy car. But the worst, the worst one, honestly, is is Monster Trucks Incorporated because, like, in that one, you have John Goodman saying, "But Mike, the Boomobile's in trouble." Which sounded, it sounded straight enough out of like a Disney Channel like show. It it, it did. It felt although so it's becoming bad. a Disney, isn't it becoming a Disney Channel show? Although that's irrelevant. Oh Sorry. no, Disney Plus. How could you? They didn't you change do. a bug's life. <laughs> well, I mean, I, that one. <laughs> I, I I think that isn't it something like a VW bug's life? I mean, no, that's it's a bug's life. I'm pretty sure. I got oh. look right now. I am. Almost positive it's just the bug's life. Ugh, oh, yeah, that's, that's right. It would, that was all they could do with that. Proving, yeah. Not even a buggy life or a... It's, it, it's also horrifying because at one point you see flies in the Cars universe. Yeah. And the flies are little, little tiny blue VW bugs with wings. Yes. That's one of the worst things I've ever seen. <laughs> it made me question everything. <laughs> oh my god. So I, I, anyway, you know, I, f- I feel like we're getting really we're getting really deep into darkness. So yeah, let's, if anything, okay, who okay, knew it would be okay, cars okay, that would do this? Let's, let's do a little let's do a little therapy exercise. I, everyone in the room, please give uh, give us a positive note about cars. Let's start with. With with Rouch Tower. <laughs> mm. Gotta be something. Oh, and it's gotta, gotta be a gotta genuine be, one. Gotta be something. Uh uh the part of the particle effects are pretty good for two thousand and six. Oh yeah, that's true, that's right, yeah. They they got some good water, they got some good smoke. I guess it's because, you know, uh one of the easiest things to animate is metal. So you could really focus on other stuff such as environmental details That's when true. you're working exclusively with cars but the uh other such effects such as the bubbling tar it looks pretty good okay oh yeah the bubbling tar does look really good yeah that too if yeah, anything that's... about cars i will say the cars trilogy in general it has effects good effects for things you wouldn't think you would need good effects for it yes like I... with a tar with a tar in Cars One, with the inflatable in Cars Two, and I think there was something in Cars Three that really I really liked as well that had nothing to do with the block. It was totally the mud, like the mud. Was- <gasps> yes, it was. <laughs> Ironically, the uh, the mud in Cars One does not look that good. There's like a brief moment where it gets all over Lightning's face, and it just looks like someone threw a blanket on him. Yeah, yeah, they they, they hadn't figured that one out quite yet. Um, it took them two Cars sequels to do it. <laughs> they, they were building, they were that's that's such cars. a good sentence. That's such a good sentence. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's okay. Very fair. Yes. Yeah. All um, right. I that's your positive. Positive. Yeah. Random. Your turn. Yes. Um, you may not agree with me with this, but I kind of think the supporting cast, except for maybe maybe there, even though it's not that bad, is likable. And I, when I say supporting cast, I mean the people in Radiator Springs. Okay. Um, I, 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 hear me out. Hear me out. Just hear me out. Okay. I know. I know. <laughs> Compared to Lightning McQueen, it was a breath of fresh air to see like a colorful cast that mm. was actually slightly positive and it was interesting and not total assholes if it weren't and i guess i don't know the town helped make him transform i mean granted okay even not if it's not like the whole town i will say i like sally and doc hudson mm, yeah, okay yeah i'll grant you that one yeah do, sally is a good leading lady 
and mm-hmm. she's smart and yeah. polar opposite of Lightning McQueen. And she, they actually have a... I don't know if... Okay, I can't say they have a decent chemistry, but they she's actually, like, interesting to, like, watch and listen to. She actually gives McQueen some backstory about the town and actually, like, helps him, like, grow as a kid, grow, quote-unquote, as a character. <laughs> So I, I just, I, I think Sally's interesting as a character just because she's just like not an asshole and she cares about everyone in the town around her. Yeah. And she, and I like, I didn't mention this before, but I like Doc Hudson just because he's, he's again, he's very interesting. He's a, we don't know this, but he's a former race car driver car. And he, um, and he like he takes one look at my Lightning McQueen and wants nothing to do with him, which uh, we all relate to. So, and, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, oh, great! And I don't know, asshole. just like hearing about his backstory and just like what happened to him is just very interesting, and you feel for him a little bit. And I really admire, I really admire both of them. I think it's interesting that you feel for him, but at the same time, you can acknowledge that he's in the wrong when yes. he does what he does. Yeah, okay. That's good. That's a very I, good thing. I'm not sure about that thing about the other inhabitants of the town, because, yes, they're all very colorful, but they're very broadly drawn if i can I know, if i can be just... generous about that like i think this may be the most ethnic stereotype heavy <laughs> pixar yeah. movie yeah i had a couple of those there's I mean, a there's yeah. there's luigi and guido there's yes. ramon yes. who is voiced by cheech marin yeah that's, and that's right. and there's a uh, flow who actually does uh, like sassy head bobs, which I gasped at. <laughs> I could not believe. Oh, oh! I guess we could still do that in two thousand and six, okay. huh? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Oh, Ooh. I forgot this movie's over ten years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well over. Um, yeah. Maybe it's just cause it, there could be nostalgia talking here because, mm-hmm. and yes, it's weird to feel nostalgic for cars. <laughs> I, and think? also, also. Maybe it's just because I just like Fillmore and what's his Sarge. the other guy's name? Sarge and Fillmore a lot, and I just quote them. I remember us quoting them constantly. Uh, I, I honestly like the best part of of those two. It's silly, but I just I just kind of like that they. It seems like every single morning they have their little daily ritual where Sarge plays uh, the bugle call to get up, plays the Hendrix version of the anthem. Will you turn that? Disrespectful junk off! Respect the classics, man! It's Hendrix! God, that Which is... makes me think of what a car Jimi Hendrix would look yeah. like. And then I'm we're, or then we'll get off topic for years. <laughs> so uh, I'm I'm guessing probably another VW bus. Maybe like one of those little compacts. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, should we talk about him? But like I, uh, stop uh, on him for a hot second. Well, oh, wait, no, no, wait, no, 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 I forgot. Uh, Kirby fan and Wash, you guys gotta say something positive about cars. Yeah, huh. so you go, Wash. Oh, fine. Okay. As I was going into this, I, I got a decent sense that this was... Like, when, we, when you think back to the previous two Pixar films, Finding Nemo and, and The Incredibles, <laughs> something that we were uh, talking about a lot in those in those episodes is just how grand they were and just how, how big they were in, in sort of scope. And I do kind of appreciate this, this. Kind of feels like a a rebuttal of that, and I and I do kind of I, I appreciate that a little bit. It really is just a slow down movie. Like there there is a a bit of like a ticking clock with the race and stuff, but quite a lot of it it's just like the the stuff with the I forget his name the 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 bull the the equivalent of the bull in the in the uh, the uh, f- uh Frank the Combine. Yeah, that's right. The, yeah, the, the combine, the... Uh... I, I will say, like, Lightning McQueen has, like, three flashbacks to, like, whoever's going to be Dynaco champion. Uh, the first two are both 32 seconds long, which is too long, in my opinion. Like, probably, probably could have gotten the joke across with less. Like, the first is lightning winning and getting all the glory and then it's chick hicks winning and getting all the glory the third which has lightning like a bad get a bad dream after going tractor tipping and it's frank the combine winning 
<laughs> actually did make me laugh. And then he gets licked by a tractor. I think the only thing I laughed at was that Chick Hicks is, like, swallowed up by Frank and ground up on screen. <laughs> it was just so brutal that I laughed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like I, li- I like when during these his uh his little fantasy about Chick Hicks winning on one of the magazines that he's imagining it says Chick Hicks he's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> like it, like it, you just see him disappear under the blades, and then a little <laughs> puff of green comes out. <laughs> And I thought, oh, Jesus, he's dead. <laughs> Who knew cars were so dark? Wash, you got to bring up that deleted scene where they, like, yeah, okay. Yeah, he showed me this one. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, okay. So, uh, there was a deleted scene. It, it was called Community Service. The original premise was that they were going to give him a choice of either Community Service or he does a Radiator Springs race. Because I guess they really mm. wanted to have a race in this movie because they were cars. Um, and he, his first choice was community service. And, uh, he says to Mater, oh, what, what's this community service about? And Mater says, I don't know, Chris, you're going to find out for yourself. And face to black, he wakes up, uh, Doc Hudson is, is just like, how you feeling, son? Oh, I, I don't feel so good. And then you see that what had happened with that. The, you, the 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 camera pans over and you see Lightning McQueen's body without an engine, and he and Lightning looks at a mirror in the corner and he sees that he that Doc Hudson put his engine inside a steamroller, <laughs> and, and, and all for the purpose of, of of pressing out some some asphalt for the new road. <laughs> and it's like, you guys are crazy! And he's like screaming in agony as he's driving away. Like, I gotta get out of here! <laughs> and, it's like, and I was like, what the hell is the joke in this? This is just awful! And then, isn't it re- also revealed during that point that, like, Mater had his engine put in Lightning McQueen's body. Yes, that's right. That is exactly right. And he and and then this uh, story he, took on a grim, ironic twist. Yeah. <laughs> and get her done. <laughs> and, then, the, and then Mac the Mac the truck uh, finally uh, like like comes by and and uh, Lightning inside the uh, inside the steam like, Oh Mac, thank God you're here. And then he drives past. And he goes to Mater inside the lightning and says, I knew you'd finally uh, come by. Come on in. And he, he, uh, like lightning, is, it's like, he's stealing my body. He's stealing my life. And Mater's like, I always wanted to be a race car driver. Uh, or something like that. And then, and then it drives away and it turns out, and then it turns out it was all a dream. And, and he wakes up and it's, uh, and, and in front of uh, Doc Hudson and, and it's just like, oh, okay, it's still, it's still me. But he sees in the corner that, that the steamroller with, without an engine and says, well, let's get started on the community service. And Lightning's like, not the community service. I'll do the race. Which, even though it's a dream sequence, there's an implication that what just happened is plausible because there's a steamroller in the corner. Yeah, I have to ask. Why isn't Bessie alive? Oh my god, I... That's... Why is it that with Pixar movies, where you talk about like the characters and stuff, but with Cars, we have so many questions about these things, about like, how shit works. <laughs> like, I, I know it's a fairy tale, but at the same point, it feels like Bessie is... I mean, aside from the farming equipment being... Uh, farm animals rather than farm errors that doesn't really make any sense who looks after them but is Bessie some kind of lobotomized ward of the state I, I, I mean she just she just makes ash fall and she she's basically a plow like Bessie's dead and they're lugging around her corpse oh, oh dear god <laughs> I, man cars is so dark <laughs> Also, I, I, I don't it's understand... Wor- it's, I, I think cars just get sadder than the t- first ten minutes of Up. Oh, no. How do cars die? <laughs> <laughs> this is what this whole podcast has been leading up to. It's the question, how do well, cars... Well, it happened to Doc Hudson, so it, they okay. never tell us. It happened to... Spoilers. 
The, it happened I, to the founder of Radiator Springs, Jonathan. And it's implied that Lizzie at some point will just die from natural causes. But, you know, if you keep your engine in good working order and transfer it to another car's body, are the cars immortal or not? What, well, what's it, the deal here? The, the trouble is that they're not because in Cars 2 and 3, because this is this is uh, Paul Newman's uh, final acting role, rest in peace. Yeah. Um, it, they, <laughs> Imagine. It, they mentioned multiple times his death. Like it's in yeah. it's in canon that he he died in between cars and cars too. It, it's really unfortunate to have done like HUD and Cool Hand Luke and even something as small as the Mighty Ducks, and then just your last role ever is cars. Yeah, you're at least it's the best cars. <sighs> With that. Be- <laughs> It's both the it's literal the and figurative end of the road for you. Uh, Kirby fan, positive thing about cars. <laughs> I don't know if you could tell that I've been quiet for the last 40 minutes, but there's a lot that I liked in the movie. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I, I imagine this must have been a really... This, 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 has, been really been a, a little, this has been a little awkward, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um... If I'm going to limit it to one positive thing, I'm just going to something right off the top of my head. I like that when the movie begins to shift, it's the, 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 the movie's transition from High Speed Raceway to Radiator Springs is a literal transition from something wild, crazy, and frantic. And then when they start going to California, it's a montage of a lot of greenery, a lot of rivers, lakes, trees, empty roads. It's setting up that the the mood of the movie or the message of the movie is going to be slowing down. There's a, like I said, the first, the opening act of the movie is, is racing, loud noises, ka-chow. And, <laughs> ka-chow. <laughs> There's one thing you gotta remember about cars, it's ka-chow. But going from that and transitioning that into something calm and then... Once that's out of the way, that's when it starts. That's when the whole thing starts of lightning falling out Changing. of Mac tr- falling out of the Mack truck and ending up in Radiator Springs. And even if even if lightning isn't getting it right away, it's gradual. It's not something that you know the people just accept. You know, it's not like the Bugs Life or anything. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, <laughs> you know the thing is uh, the road slowly becomes an ever more obvious metaphor for both the town slowly improving bit by bit and lightning slowly learning the virtue of patience like they yeah the first day he tries to rush it and you know what you can't rush it so he is delayed even further as he has to scrape up all the messily applied tarmac Mm -hmm. it's exactly It might sound corny or cheesy or whatever, but it's not. They don't bash you over the head with it constantly. It's something that you're left to see for yourself. It's not, oh, look, lightning's paving the road. He's getting better, and his personality's becoming more tolerable, too. Yuck, yuck, yuck. It's it's there for you to see. It doesn't get corny or cheesy, I would say, until the Our Town sequence. Life Which could is... be a dream. Life could be a <laughs> yeah, dream. Uh, it's... I like that song. So, <laughs> okay, look, I, I'm not bashing the songs I... themselves. I, I, I'm kind of bashing just how how many they use it. But anyway, Rastow, go ahead. Yeah, the uh, if I, I would rather listen to Shaboom than the uh, Life as a Highway cover that Rascal Flats does during that montage Kirby was talking about. But no, the Our Town sequence that I am speaking of and is supremely corny in my opinion is like, this is basically John Lasseter's message, like his inner hidden message of the movie that seems very personal and sentimental and nostalgic, which is that highways are bad because they make people miss the little things. Like it's not about getting somewhere, man. It's about the journey and how the practice of building highways might be directly responsible for the small, for the financial decline of small town America. And it's just set to this very uh, sappy Randy Newman song sung by James Taylor. 
That's a Randy Jones song. Okay, I will. I will absolutely great. one. I will absolutely one hundred percent agree with you that the song is dumb. <laughs> But I, I I'm not, about not so much. I'm not so much seeing it as highways are directly responsible for people missing out on the smaller things. I'm seeing it as as, as things get more streamlined and convenient, and we start seeing that for what it is. We miss out on the things that we would only see if things you know weren't incredibly convenient. We're missing out <laughs> on a lot of the 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 hominess of. The things you have to do one way, rather. The convenience of a highway is nice, but you, you miss out on something with, with that. There's so, something something that you can explain, but you can't really understand explaining it with logic. I like that they used a song for that. I just don't like that Randy Newman is the one that composed it. <laughs> I didn't even know it was a Randy Newman song until now. Yeah, it's, it's a Randy Newman song, but it's sung by I could tell by the lyrics. James I could tell by the lyrics it was Randy <laughs> oh my God. It makes sense now. That's why it's so forgettable. Yeah. It, it, I, I, it's also hilarious because if you look up the Wikipedia page for the car soundtrack, it says, <laughs> Our town became a, a, like an anthem for uh, New Orleans post Hurricane Katrina. And then right next to it, it just says, Citation needed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's true. <laughs> I, I have some questions about them. <laughs> oh my god! Like, I, I understand. I understand it was roughly contemporary, but I don't think so. Oh, my god. oh, oh dear! Oh dear! Oh my god! We haven't even talked about Mater and all the shit that's been brought yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. You three dump on Mater so I can talk about why I like him when you're done. I mean, I don't hate him in this one, though. I don't Ma- like Larry Ma- the Cable Guy as a comedian or as a Yeah, person. I don't like him either, but, I, like... Same, same. I, I like... I don't know. I kind of like them as friends. It, I, I mean, I hate Mater on his own because of Cars too. but I... I <laughs> well... <laughs> okay. But, and other reasons, but I don't know. Just their friendship's kind of nice. Well, and, the, the lesson is, like, a little bit of Mater goes a long way. Like you can't have a movie centered around Mater. No, yeah, but no. he's a good no, 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 side no, 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 character. No. As a supporting character, I like him. As a main character, no, no. Nah. yeah, nah. yeah. <laughs> this, this he he's usually like the the like Cars Two is what happens when you screw up like finding Dory Everything. and um and Marcus University. Oh okay, god, there's there's so much to go for, for, for Cars Two, but we're still talking about Cars One. <laughs> Kirby ahead. fan, you you talk about Cars because I know you want to defend it. I do. I really do. <laughs> And you know what? I'll help you because I will start off by saying, even though I rip it so hard because it's an easy target, I don't think it's that bad of a movie. Oh, uh, did we want to? Do we want to defend Mater together, random? Fuck it. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> okay, so, go. Okay. Ahead. I didn't see Mater as just a stupid guy. I saw Mater as genuine, and I think that's what I liked about him. Yes, he wasn't, he's, yeah, he wasn't it. just you know some dumb idiot going along for the ride. He genuinely he he met lightning. And he genuinely just wanted to like the guy. Wanted to be. He's the only person in the entirety of Radiator Springs who was even willing to give him a chance. Yeah. Everyone yeah, else uh, was either afraid of him, angry at him, or just flat out ignored him. M- Mater, Mater is just he's he's a genuinely kind-hearted. Yeah, he he I, wants I, I'm person, but he's a car. Yeah. Har har har. Uh, get it? The 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 movie never actually like mocks Mater. Yeah. for being yes. the way he is yeah, like he's right. he's he, he's like sort of corny in a country bear jamboree sort of way but he, he's 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 never shown to be a bad person oh yeah, yeah not at all oh yeah no Mato is i I'm, I'm gonna say Mato is fine my only real defense of it is that i like some of Mato's jokes i'm kind of lazy like that that if, it's, <laughs> if it makes me if it makes me laugh it's good enough I, I I like the I like the line where he, after the court scene he said, "By the way, you owe me thirty two thousand dollars in legal fees." I, I actually <laughs> laughed out loud at that part. I, I, I did too. No, this might be a bad time to tell you this, but you owe me thirty two thousand dollars. <laughs> like it's uh, it's so topical. Had, like he has like so many of his lines. Uh, thirty five percent of them are like genuine hey we're being bitch birds kind of stuff but 65 percent of them are jokes and whether or not you have issues with larry the cable guy's delivery you have to at least imagine that given that ratio a few of them are going to land <laughs> yeah well yeah and, and I, 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 one, one part of mater that i really one part of mater that i really liked uh 
when Lightning gets taken away from uh, to, to to go to the race, the paparazzi and Mac and everybody they just, they, they literally take him pretty much, and. Mater slowly drives forward and says, "I didn't even get to say goodbye to him." And there's there, there is no joke. Yeah, it's not a joke. It's not a joke. He's sad that he didn't get to say goodbye to his best friend. And there's I a, mean, funny there's a joke, joke later. There's a, there's a funny joke later, but in the moment where there didn't need to be a joke, there wasn't a joke. Yeah, that's I... nice. It was the, the moment was just set to land. It was. It, 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 yeah, yeah and, and, it, and it does pay off with him going, well, Mater didn't get to say goodbye. Goodbye! Yeah. All right, I'm yeah, good. I'm good, I'm good. Yeah. And it made yeah, well, me he, chuckle. He also has, like, a very genuine small-town dream of riding in a helicopter. Yeah, yeah, nothing big, nothing grand, nothing even, ge- like, stereotype cowboy western thing. It's just, it's very, I want to ride a hel- I want to ride a helicopter, that's it. <laughs> And he, Lightning McQueen at first sort of treats this like, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. like, uh, like George telling Lenny they can go out and visit the rabbits. But over time, he eventually... God, that's a dark comparison. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, continue. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, now I'm, now I'm imagining someone shooting a car in the head and how oh. that works. <laughs> cars too, cars too, cars too. I mean, yeah, cars too. Oh, God. <laughs> What were you Dude. saying about that before? With 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 um yeah, he was like it was like George and Lenny, but but ultimately, uh, and what I feel is, I feel like the whole Our Town sequence is a little rushed, and how quickly Lightning grows to appreciate the beauty of nature, and like all of a sudden, it's just there he is. But yeah, afterwards, yeah, I, it, it it is a slow. Afterwards, that very very quick period of character development, it is a little more slow, a little more gradual, a little more organic. See, I actually have to disagree with that. One of the things that I really like about the movie is that when everyone's telling Lightning about how great Radiator Springs is and how he just needs to settle down, he's not listening because all he can think about is the race. But once he actually has moments where he can have a nice moment with Sally, go scare the tractors with Mater, see that Doc actually is something, he was an ex-racer, that, it's, it's by actually doing the things with everybody. That's when mm-hmm. he kind of realizes, maybe this isn't all so bad. And then only after that point, does he go on the drive with Sally, and she explains about how the highway ruined Radiator Springs and all that. That's kind of when kind of realizes, wait a minute, maybe life isn't all about being in the fast lane, you know? Uh, and that's fair. I mean, it, it, previously it was just the town was just a prison for him. It was a place where these weirdos bugged you at night, and by day you had to work as a fucking plow horse. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's, it's hillbilly hell, like you said. I would appreciate any. Uh, actually, here's another positive thing I'm going to say. Jeremy Piven voices Lightning's agent Harve. Now that's not the positive part because entourage and anything stemming from it is terrible. <laughs> but I'm I think we're going to all agree on that. But I'm going to say it's a small mercy because for the UK release he was dubbed by Jeremy Clarkson. So really? yeah, yeah. Mm. Just calling up in the trailer like lightning i've got some more terrible things to say about indian people click oh my goodness (laughs) like i i'd I'd rather not hear jeremy clarkson if it's all the same (laughs) to you oh my god i'm learning so much from our cars expert here (laughs) yes (laughs) um and on that note do you want do you guys want to talk about the ending yeah, yeah, I, I, oh yeah, we probably I'd should. I'd love to talk about the ending because well, I like the well, movie. Well, why don't Kirby? You talk about the <laughs> yeah, ending. Yeah, Kirby fan. God, I love the ending. Oh my god, I love the ending. Oh, I agree. Man. I agree. Oh my god. Oh. It's probably the oh. best. It's it's pro- it's very rewarding to see, especially seeing how after like Lightning McQueen's bicycle, like, oh, I'm going to get that piston cup. I want that piston cup. I want it. And just to see him just like grow so much to the point where he will throw it away just to help someone finish the race it's it really shows every, his arc it doesn't every, redeem him the, exactly the, every, but it helps. everything everything the movie was leading up to came together in a perfectly tied knot it's kind of unfortunate that you know he's not helping 
Doc Hudson himself. He's just sort of helping him through proxy via yeah. an ancillary character, Strip Weathers. Uh, uh, the, the king, yeah, that's right. Yeah. But yeah, that's true. While he's pushing it, he even uh, makes a reference to uh, Doc Hudson where he says, like a, an old timer once told me, it's just an empty cup. And it's like, oh, yeah. it's, you, it's the climax of their relationship when they finally, they finally see eye to eye. Yeah, it's, it, it just comes across as a little odd to me because it, despite having, like, obviously a cursory respect for him, a racing legend from the very beginning, Lightning really doesn't have a relationship with Strip Weathers at all. Like, there's that moment at the beginning. He does give advice, yeah. Yeah, he just says, like, son, you're a real good racer out there, but you're acting like a dang fool. You got to learn to slow down and Specifically, dip, dip, dip. no, 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 no. <laughs> Specifically what he says, he starts talking about how good of a racer he is, and then he says, but you're, you're an stupid. idiot. <laughs> you're stupid. <laughs> yeah. and, Lightning's just, and Lightning's just like, what? <laughs> why? 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 <laughs> but it's, yeah, uh, yeah. But overall, wow. <laughs> it's very sad. I don't, the ending was very satisfying because it's one of the cases where the hero doesn't win. But he also, like, he, he does the right thing. And to see yeah, Lightning it, it, do the right thing after all the asshole-ish thing ways he's been, it's just, it's nice. And you also have to remember that this is King's last race. For Lightning, it wasn't so much about Lightning not winning. It was more about Lightning having the respect for a legend that would have ended up in the same situation as Doc Hudson did to just let him finish his race. I think it's kind of patronizing, nonetheless, to just be, like, kind of broken down and being pushed by the grace of another. Uh, but, uh, but at the same time, but at the I same mean, time, it's... That's the sports. That's, that's it's, how it's, we're going to have to do it in a, in a card world. Yeah. It's interesting because for a movie so obsessed with racing, the final race does not work according to how NASCAR races do at all. I guess maybe to prove that it's more about just the race, but ultimately, you know what NASCAR fans fucking love? They fucking love fiery crashes, and they love winners. <laughs> so there's no way that <laughs> Lightning is like making it over uh, Strip Weathers, who probably everyone was hoping would die on the track, or Chick oh, Hicks, who won the Piston Cup. Like, Lightning finishes third, and in a real NASCAR race, that wouldn't really amount to much. But it's, I, I guess, through a subversion of what the real-life expectations would be, the moral is delivered. You ever wonder that there's a reason why it's cars and not race car drivers? Um, you no, maybe I think, you may, you maybe just just maybe that if it was about NASCAR like actual drivers and what happened to King happened to a driver he would just be dead and <laughs> yeah and, like that's really depressing and nobody wants that. You mean <laughs> that like sense. the difference between being slightly damaged but able to uh, limp off the field versus getting a fucking steering column through your chest? Uh, yeah, it's rough. I really like in the beginning of the movie when Lightning says, hey, You know, because Thunder always comes after Lightning. Kapow! Who here knew the, about the Thunder thing? And, and then eventually it, it does actually turn into a rather satisfying gig. Where Adios, in, Chuck, and my name's not Chuck! <laughs> and where as a result of uh, Lightning's complete absence, Chick has just like completely rolled with it and named himself Thunder. Yeah. yeah, he yeah. even he even steals his kachow thing. He's just so he's so loving the, the spotlight and attention. I think it's kachiga. He says kachiga, 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 kachiga. <laughs> it's yeah, it, I... it's also worth noting that uh, around the time that uh, Michael Keaton's career started to get a real boost again, he did not reappear for Cars Three as Chick Hicks. I don't think he appeared for Cars. Too, but he no, had... he was there. He was there. He went there uh, for like a cameo. Oh, okay. Because he was definitely. I think it would be like an unvoiced cameo, right? Like he was in the back. No, no, no. I'm pretty sure that he hmm. was. He spoke. I I, oh. I I know for sure that he was in Cars Three because when we were when we were watching Cars Three, he was he was 
He was probably, he was the highlight of the film. That's that's saying a lot about the about Cars Three. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because when you think about it, like Chuck Hick, like what he's done like multiple times is kind of the equivalent of like attempted murder. The the first race when he shoves one of the the nearby cars, and the car and it ends up creating this. This horrifying, like, avalanche of destruction. Of cars. Uh, yeah, I don't think, like, based on, like, what you said about cars versus drivers, I don't think this would really be, like, attempted murder. But it's definitely, like, Chick Hicks is acting like he's in a roller derby or something. Just, like, checking everyone he can. Yeah. And, and after a certain point, you have to think, like, even NASCAR doesn't allow that blatant <laughs> cheating. <laughs> Like, he would probably be stripped of the Piston Cup for the massive sideline he gives the king. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they gave him a trophy and then they uh, shot confetti right into his face. It's, so that's, yeah. the, that's the payback he gets. I thought it was funny. I thought he was just such, like, a jerk. <laughs> okay, you know what I like about Cars? Oh, I mean, let me reword that. You know another thing I like about Cars? <laughs> 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 The movie is about, you know, slowing down, all that stuff, don't be in the fast lane, all that. And uh-huh. even though you, you, there is, you know, a jerk in, in Chick Hicks, and he does get his comeuppance at the end, and you could say, you know, he fills the antagonistic role, there's no villain here. No. Yeah. It's just, uh, it's just like, kind of an asshole on the sidelines. Like, yeah, that's true. The, that's the, the, villain, the villain that Lightning needs to defeat is need in to himself. They didn't the worst evil villain in a movie yeah. like this, so they didn't put one in, because they didn't yeah. need it. It's just a journey of self-growth. Yeah, they had an asshole in it, and then they had Chick Hicks, so that was fine. <laughs> that, uh, ran- random, random. That was perfect because as you finished saying that, the timer went off, so we're done. Yay! All that, right. Random. That was perfect. I hate Lightning McQueen. Okay. All right. Okay. Final thoughts. Final, Final thoughts. thoughts. Yes. Um. Let, how let, about the Rouse can go first? Yeah. You know, I. Uh, I didn't, I, there were parts of this that were tolerable, there were parts of this that, such as Jay Limo and the <laughs> Schwarzenegger Hummer that were pretty I Lightning McQueen must be found at all costs. <laughs> yeah, his name is Fen, and I, I really hate that I know this. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. By the way, does, uh, I, I brought this up before, does Jay Limo collect human slaves? Is this like the equivalent of being a classic car collector? Is that he just owns old people? Yeah. <laughs> Humans do exist what? in the cars world. <laughs> they're like show pieces. You can't take them out, but but they're pretty rare. They're like a car's earrings. Um, but it's, oh, uh, I all right. I would say that I didn't enjoy this film. I did enjoy talking about it, and I did enjoy at least somewhat moderating my opinion on it. And due to sunk cost fallacy, I am obviously up for any other Cars movies you boys want to do. Uh, oh, we're going to rip yes. that film apart. Yes, yes, even Cars 2. God damn you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, who's next? Who's next? I think it was me that said that, that went third, so I'll go second. I don't care for this movie. This movie very much. It's just my my number one problem with it is Lightning McQueen himself. When we get to the uh, ranking, it's really gonna be it's, it's really gonna be rough for me to, to decide whether whether I prefer a protagonist that's that's an asshole or a protagonist that's boring in in a bug's life. Uh, hmm. So I know my answer. There's there's some value that I can get out of it. It does it, it's. Bad protagonist. I also felt that it was it was it was kind of on the long side, which is weird because it's only like a minute longer than The Incredibles. But I hmm. had to I had to keep like rewinding them because I just kept like I kept like getting distracted with laundry and such. Beyond the protagonist, I thought that the town people were fine, broad but fine, and I I I like I like Rascal Flash. The I like the cover. Uh, my, my my partner and I we, we we play that song all the time when we're driving because it's it's a it's a good song. I just like it. Uh, that's that's my that's my measly defense of cars. So 
That takes it to uh, Rando by Stando. Rando oh, by oh. Stando. Again, I make fun of it because it's such an easy target. But to be honest, I still kind of enjoyed watching it when I was paying attention. Um, because <laughs> I was, compliment. <laughs> I got distracted by doing homework a lot. And at the same time, it's like, oh, Lightning McQueen's on. I'll work on this paragraph. Or, oh, he's, oh, he's, he's saying how he's just, he's doing a montage about how he's going to be get the piston cup and be work for Dynaco. I can fix this sentence and edit this article right here. So, but other than Lightning McQueen, I, I don't know. I there were points where I really did enjoy it, or not maybe not enjoy is the right word, but really did tolerate it, and like I. It, there were points, especially with Doc Hudson and Sally, and even Mater, where <laughs> and the where I really did find myself kind of liking it, and I and again the ending was great. There's some lines that made me laugh, even though I didn't think they would. Um, and I don't think it's as bad, but it's just very easy to make fun of because it's cars. So that's why I was like ripping on it a little bit, but. <laughs> I'm kind of with Kirby fan, maybe, when I say I kind of like it. Especially compared to the other two Cars films. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, I guess that takes us back to the start. Kirby, please <sighs> please explain yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good way of putting it. Um, you How do you ask. plead? So... Rando, you said I'm with Kirby fan and how I kind of like it. Unfortunately, you're wrong. I really like it. Oh. <laughs> I really I have an appreciation of movies that aren't about the, a, a big grand narrative that has to go all these places just to tell a story. I like a, I like I like a plot that could just be simple, concise and get its point across, especially one that does as good of a job as this one does in setting up a cozy home homey feeling kind of town uh I, as much as i don't like lightning mcqueen i even think he has his moments there's a great moment pretty early on where harv says he can invite lightning's friends instead of lightning saying oh who needs friends when you're lightning mcqueen he's kind of because he's just like yeah yeah my friends you can and he just kind of stops yeah this is, so even even lightning has his moments i don't think it's enough to uh say he's a good protagonist but e- even the worst part of the movie has good moments about it. I-, I like the way the movie looks a lot. I think it does a very good job showing why this is a place that people care, why this setting is a place that these characters care about. I am with Wash and how I really like the residents of Radiator Springs. I think they're charming. Uh, very one note, except for the ones that don't need to be, and I think that's fine. I think one note characters can be very funny if they're done right. And I'm not saying all of them are done right, but the ones that are done right, I really like. Kind of like how Wash said with Sarge and Fillmore, the, the, I love their bits. I love that they do it every morning, and it's just something that everyone's kind of accepted. <laughs> like I said, I really like Mater. I, I, I love this genuine kind of character. Uh, the whole nine yards. I, I could go on about why I do really genuinely like the movie, but I'm not going to pretend there aren't flaws with it, because absolutely... There were things about the movie that I really didn't like. I'm not going to forget about how terrible the Rust Easy scene was. That was that was hard to sit through. Um, <laughs> yeah, but it was really difficult. Yeah, it was really hard. But on the whole, and whatever. On the whole, I I like it. I I really like it, and that's that's it. That that's that's what I that's what I think. So what you're okay. saying is that this movie is better than The Incredibles. Oh, absolutely. The Incredibles, that's an, it's an okay movie. Better than A Bug's Life, maybe, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, Indeed. on that note... <laughs> so, so this is the part of the, the episode where we do our, our ranking. I, I haven't really even uh, explained the ranking that much in, in the, uh, the previous episode, but uh, uh, our collective ranking so, so far, based on my, my new system, is that... From the bottom up, we have A Buzz Life, then Toy Story 2, Masters Inc., Toy Story 1, Incredibles, and Finding Nemo are both in a tie. We have a two-way tie to the, to, to the number one spot. But now is the time where we uh, figure out what we collectively think this is. Uh, I'll, I'll ask this question around. Is this movie better than A Buzz Life? Yes. Yes. Okay. 
God, oh. do you even need me to answer that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, um, I, I, I'm going to say that it edges just below, for me, it edges just below <laughs> Toy Story 2. That's fair. That's fair. fair. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that can, that can move up uh, quite, quite easily. Next up, is this movie better than Toy Story 2? About the same. I would say. Okay. <laughs> so well, what do you, what do you, what do you guys say? My answer is um I I would say that uh I definitely found Toy Story 2 funnier. Just in terms of the bits. Yeah, I I could I agree with that. I I'm, uh, I'm saying no. I'm saying no. I'm saying okay. no. Toy Story 2 is better. I I, I, I would say like in ter- in terms of just the uh the general comforting presence of Big L made, made uh, Toy Story 2 better than Cars. <laughs> okay. All right, Kirby fan? Uh... <laughs> Sorry it's to tough, do this to you, Random. Yes, I like Cars better than Toy Story 2. Hmm. Okay. You're, you're going to be here a little while longer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Wait, no, I'm not. <laughs> Let's just leave it unchallenged. Yes, yes. We should never stop referencing this. <laughs> that, that YouTube poop. <laughs> okay. Okay. Best. Could, okay. So, right, what's so next? now, uh, Kirby, on your list, you said that uh, above Toy Story 2 was Monsters, Inc. Is this film better than Monsters, Incorporated? Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, I think it's better than Monsters. Ooh, Inc. Why do you Ooh. say that? Contentious. This one was tough. I was comparing these two movies a lot, and I think they they, they both what what worked in each I thought was very different, and what didn't work with each I thought was very different. And ultimately, what I kind of came came to think was that Monst- Monsters Inc. had a really good villain with Water Noose, and they had a really stupid villain with Randall. And when I thought about the Cars equivalent to that, it just kind of, it was a really nice feeling of being able to sit through a movie where there wasn't necessarily an opposing force. It was it was just a movie where the narrative naturally progressed. And I that thought, just, wow, it, oh my god, I think I like this more than Monsters, Inc. Someone help me. Not just, a, not just a rather unsatisfying villain, but a villain that somewhat insulted Steve Buscemi when he looked at a picture of him. Now, Kirby... Is this film better than Toy Story 1? Ooh. Be real careful now, Kirby fan. <laughs> oh, boy. Do I have to answer this? Yes. Oh, yeah. no. I have to know. Because, I, I, in fact, I, I feel like I already know the answer in you. you just... Hey, based on what I just said? <laughs> just said right, Well, I'm the out. answer is I like A Bug's Life more than both of them. Moving on. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I like it more. All right. Uh, no. Bye, random. <laughs> okay. Bye, random. <laughs> no, I'm, I want to see where this goes. Uh, okay. 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 But, so, but do hurry. let me just let me She's let me waiting say, outside let, the front door right now. <laughs> let me let me let me say this. This answer could super easily flip flop by the time this this is over. That's fair. this is this is very close, and I will honestly admit. This decision might just be because Cars is really fresh in my mind since I literally just watched it. When I sit down and think about it for a while, this could change. I I just ultimately kind of think that as as much as I love Toy Story, it I I love Toy Story's basic plot just in the same way that I like that Cars plot plot is very basic. Toy Story I feel like went more places while still kind of trying to have a basic plot and. It wor- it worked. The movie's freaking good, but also I don't know. I kind of think I may I might have liked a movie where Woody and Buzz just kind of naturally got to be better with each other. Or maybe I could have liked a movie where they did go to all these places, but a little more happened than just kind of kind of a, a by the numbers buddy buddy movie. I almost want to say. So essentially, you're and- proposing a Toy Story without Sid. Yes, but the problem with Sid is that Sid complicates things further. Now now there's a whole new room with a whole new kid who treats his toys, toys in his own way. You have a sister that thinks Woody going, Hannah, oh Hannah, is her mother. 
<laughs> that's that's okay. It, Man, it, never mind. I cars is better than Toy Story for me. Too. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Thank you, Randy. No, no, I'm I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm so <laughs> kidding. And okay. again, like I, I really want to stress this point. Next week, th- this opinion can change, and I hate to say it <laughs> probably right. will so soon, but it probably will. But as for right now, I am going to say the sentence that will make all the viewers dislike this video. I think I might like Cars more than Toy Story. Okay, well, we're done. The channel's over. Uh, well, not okay. quite yet. Redemption Hour is still upon us. Nothing right. gets the views more than the old hate clicks. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, oh, really? No, no, no. Toy Story was not my favorite movie. Okay, but. Okay, uh, okay. okay. Uh, so, uh, I have to go. Yeah, okay. Real quick. Is this film better than uh, Finding Nemo? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Hell no. Okay. Okay. I was about to <laughs> okay. say. I was about okay. to. Hell, the Finding Nemo to... is way better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So I uh, let me do the calculations on this. Beep boop beep beep beep. Okay. So our our new nice. average score is from the bottom up, Buzz Life, followed by Toy Story 2. What? Am I carrying cars that hard? Yeah. Followed by Damn. cars. Oh my god. I'm followed, so sorry. <laughs> followed by cars. Followed by Monsters, Inc., followed by Toy Story 1, and then it's a tie between The Incredibles and Finding Nemo. I, I, I do have to, uh, I didn't mention this before, but I did change my ranking on, uh, on this. I did uh, put the um, Toy Story 1 lower on my on my list. Uh, I put it underneath uh, Monsters, Incorporated, so I did, like, fuzz up with the, with, with the, the, the ranking with this a tiny bit. But <laughs> I okay. This is remarkable. Right. Th- thank, thank you so it much. Is. Thank you so much for staying, Random. Sorry, sorry, no sorry. I kept you. I will see you next week where we discuss Ratatouille. Ratatouille. Yeah, that is Ratatouille. Oh shit. Ratatouille. Uh, okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Right. Bye. Random. Bye, Random. Okay. Oh. So uh, that's that. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Yes, this has been an emotional ride for everybody <laughs> involved. <laughs> This is this is quite an upset. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what you mean? You three are upset, or <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, I'm Raj problematic. Da- <laughs> problematic fan sixty six. Raj Dower, um, how do you how do you feel about this podcast? Well, it was I, good until <laughs> I I enjoyed it immensely. But I think it burned out in the final lap. <laughs> so I, I guess I'll be the one to say it uh, in anticipation of next week. Bon appetit, boys. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's okay. All rats, I wanted to say it first. Oh. <laughs> uh, you, were really, you were really cooking that one up, weren't you? <laughs> yes, I finally got one pun. <laughs> I can't stomach this. <laughs> Remy. Oh, well, on that note. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank, you, thank you very much for, for listening to, to this. Uh, you, you've heard uh, Random Bystander here. I am the Wash. Good ciao. Good chiga. Good chiga, good chiga, good ciao. <laughs> and thank you very much. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Wow.